Well, hi, travelers. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Today is going to be a continuation of last week's video on basic solar. And I'm going to jump right in with batteries. And that's where I left off last week. So come on over and watch this week's video. All right. Catch you in a minute. Okay. Now, people are going to ask me differences in batteries. I get that all the time. Okay. Your six volt golf cart batteries are designed to be discharged and recharged many, many times. They're heavy duty, they weigh a lot, so we're talking 60 to 100 pounds, they're heavy. But they're designed to discharge, recharge, discharge and recharge. They're, they're the draft horses of the batteries. Now, your 12 volt, your standard batteries, there's several different kinds. There's the kind you put underneath the hood, it's called a starter battery. You don't want one of those. There's called the marine battery, which is part starter and part deep cycle. You don't want one of those. You want a true deep cycle battery for your house battery in your vehicle. And the reason for that is you're not starting anything. Starter batteries have a lot of oomph to get started and not so much holding power because they're designed to be recharged with an alternator constantly or a generator, one or the other, recharged all the time to top up. They're not designed to drop and then be brought back up. They're designed to stay up there. So you don't want that starter battery type of a battery. You want what they call a deep cycle battery. Now, you can buy those. They're all over the place. Um, and they are different costs for different sizes. All right, you want the largest capacity battery you have for the space that you have and for the weight your rig can hold. They're very heavy. That's your heaviest component in your vehicle by far. The second heaviest would be your refrigerator, depending on what size you want. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what all this stuff runs, but I'm telling you right now on my four 230 amp hour batteries, so I have 460 amp hours of total battery usage, I run an apartment refrigerator. I run a five cubic foot refrigerator freezer in this van with that power. I also run a fantastic vent fan 24 seven and I charge my electronics. And I'm fine as long as the sun's out. If the sun goes away, I've got to bump it up with my generator. Not a problem. I'm okay with that. All I have to do is manage my power usage. I do not have to turn it off at night. I do not have to unplug anything at night. It can run 24 seven, we're fine. I don't turn my inverter off and turn it on. It runs 24 seven and it's perfectly fine. And everything's been working in this van for three years now and things are still working fine. I have just recently purchased a new inverter to have on hand in case this one goes kaput because I am reaching the four year mark using this inverter. So I don't know how long they'll last, but I don't want to be out in the cold when it quits because I got a refrigerator I need to run. So um, batteries usually last, oh, four to five years if you take care of them. A lot of people go, oh, I need AGMs or I need gels. Um, you know, just your regular lead acid batteries are absolutely fine. You just have to add water to them. Now, they do off gas as they're charging and you really don't want that inside your sleeping and living area. So you want that outside or in a compartment away from where you sleep, boxed up with a vent going somewhere. AGMs, you don't have to vent them. Lithiums, you do not have to vent them. Lithiums is the new power on the market. Very expensive and they're tricky to handle. I don't know anything about lithium, so don't even ask me. There's plenty of channels out there that'll tell you. Like I said, Will Prowse, good channel. So somebody asked me what the best batteries are to use. I think I explained that in there. Uh, Trojan makes a good battery. Duracell makes a good battery. Costco sells golf cart batteries insanely cheap, $95 a piece. Perfect batteries. Costco people, Costco. And they stand behind what they sell. 95 bucks for a golf cart battery is a good price. I told you mine were like $125. Okay, and mine are Trojans. I think the ones are Interstates at Costco. Interstates a good company. Right now, Battleborn is the go-to uh, solar powered battery because they have a 10 year warranty on them. Nobody else has that warranty. Okay, let's see, I had another question here. 
Did I have my electric and solar power professionally installed? Nope. I did it myself. It was very simple. You just have to have a little basic understanding of electricity and understand how that works. And if you don't, get somebody to install it. If you have a motor home, very easy to install solar system to your motor home. You can plug directly into your battery of a solar panel. You get one of those portable solar panels that has the inverter attached to it and it comes with the plug cord to plug into that. Now you have solar power going into your motorhome. The rest of the systems are already there. All you want to do is charge that battery. Get a portable panel, plug it in. Now you're charging the batteries you already have, the systems you already have, and you don't have to spend a fortune to get your RV set up to be used on solar. And the cool thing about portable is you can plug it in and run that cord 20 feet out there and you can be in the shade and your solar can be in the sun. Okay, now if you're converting a van or something else, now that's a whole different ball game. Now you're into systems. All right, anyway, next question somebody asked. The biggest question I have is determining how much solar do I need? Okay, how much do I need? All right, how much do you need? What are you gonna run? How much solar do you need? All right, you're gonna run a refrigerator, some sort of way to keep your food cool. Now, if you're in a motor home, you will have a propane operated refrigerator, which is that's probably what you will use when you're boondocking. And you're going to need battery power to run the mechanisms that turn that refrigerator on and off and that sort of thing. So you're not gonna need a whole lot of power to run that refrigerator. You're going to want to run a few lights in your rig and you're going to want to plug in your electronics. Now, if you live in an RV, all of that stuff's already attached to your RV. It runs off the battery system. It already works. All you need your solar for is to recharge that battery. So, okay, how many batteries do you have? If you have one battery, you get 100 watts of solar or up to 200 watts of solar to charge that one battery. That's all you need. A portable solar panel will do it. If you have two batteries, 100 watts to 200 watts, that's all you need. Plug it in, you're done. Now, if you're in a van, that's different. In a van, you're not going to be running a propane-powered refrigerator. You're gonna be running one that runs off your battery system. You're gonna need more solar. You're going to be plugging in all your electronics. You're gonna need solar to accompany that. Um, like I said, with four, golf cart batteries, four six volt golf cart batteries, I run a 60 watt refrigerator. And that's how much power it takes. It runs a long time. It runs about an hour. So it uses a lot of power because it's open constantly. I also have the same system in my trailer and I run a Winther 85 quart freezer. Now, none of you in a van need a freezer that big unless you got a big old dog that eats a lot of food that's a big freezer anyway that also runs 60 watts of power however that's only open every few days and it runs for less time it also runs off a direct 12 volt I do not have to have an inverter to run that freezer the one inside of my van I have to have an inverter it runs a little uses a little more power because of the inverter as well um, but they both use 60 watts. Now the one in the in the van starts out at 100 for about two or three minutes and then it'll drop down to 60 and stay there and run about an hour charging, okay, running to get cold. So it's sucking battery power. So during the day, it runs really great. So in the evening, after the sun goes down, I have limited access to that refrigerator. Preferably not at all, especially in the winter months. In the summer months, my batteries are pretty much charged and the sun doesn't go down till real late in the evening and no big deal. But in the winter months, the sun goes down at four o'clock in the afternoon. There's no sun until the next morning at eight or nine. So that's a lot of hours without some sunshine to replenish what that refrigerator takes. So during the night in the winter months, it's possible to unplug um, the refrigerator, which is fine because two freaking cold anyway for anything to go bad so you can do that or shut the door don't open it as soon as that sun goes down don't open it anymore done deal 
um, that may not be practical. Okay, so where was I going with all this? I'm flipping all over the place. How much power do I need? Um, so my four golf cart batteries are running that refrigerator. They're running an LED light, like I said, and they could probably run another one in here. This LED light is very bright. It's almost as bright as a uh, 75, 80 watt light bulb. It's very, very bright. Uh, I'm also charging my phone and I'm charging my computer occasionally. I don't use my computer as much as I use the phone. Most of the time I do my charging during the day, okay? Um, yes, I'm using my phone during the day, but I don't put it on the charger. Um, so I will charge an external battery pack, and then at night I'll charge the bat the phone on that battery pack. So the phone's not being draining the house batteries, it's draining the battery pack that I've already charged while the sun was out. Those battery packs, okay, like, like the uh, Jackery or the little handheld ones. Uh, my battery pack is about, it's about this size, okay, and it'll charge my phone like twice, okay, and I have a big uh, Apple um, 7 Plus, so it'll charge it twice, and I can plug it in, uh, plug my phone in when I go to bed, and it's perfectly charged in about an hour off of that little device, so yeah, no big deal. While I'm sleeping, it's charging, and then during the day, I charge that battery back up while the sun's shining, and my big batteries are sucking in power, unlimited power. So that's how you manage your system. If you've got to run things overnight, like a CPAP machine or something, get one of those jackeries or something similar, charge it during the day when the sun's out bright and going crazy, and that thing will run your CPAP overnight, and you won't be draining your house batteries. Okay, so get something like that, invest in one of those. Uh, get the largest one you can get, and the one you can handle, that'll run the CPAP. And I know Jackery makes two or three different models, and I know the great big one will do a CPAP. Um, and talk to your doctor about getting one of the new uh, energy efficient CPAPs. They have them out there, and those doctors don't like to tell you, but they're there. Now, I don't use one. I'm supposed to, but I don't. I uh, used to use one before, and I know that um, I'm on Medicare, and they want to give you the cheapest device out there. Sometimes it's better to go buy your own, and you can get what you want. There are energy efficient and run on very little power CPAPs out there. Very little. Okay? So, those are all kinds of options. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments, um, and then uh, I will try to answer them the best I can. I Hopefully, you understand how solar works. Um, the batteries are your most important component of your solar system. The bigger the wires, the safer. Big wires mean safe. Little wires mean you burn up. Okay, don't burn up your van. Don't burn up your house. If you don't know what you're doing, find somebody who does know what they're doing. And if it sounds like they're not sure what they're doing, uh, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Uh, suggestion, get Will Prost's book on solar. Read it. Then go hire somebody. Now you know something about solar. You might not know everything, but you know something about solar so you know if they're jacking you around and they're making you buy all this expensive equipment that you don't even need. Anyway, that is basic solar. Hopefully you got something out of this. It's a little long and hope it was worth your time. I'm glad to do it. Have a nice day. We'll talk to you in a bit. All right. Bye. Well, thanks travelers for coming with us today and uh, hearing this part two of solar, basic solar. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. I love you all. Thank you very much. And uh, we're getting very close to 6,000 subscribers. So uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Tell your friends about this channel and hopefully they can learn some stuff that'll help them on the road. Anyway, again, as I always say, follow your heart, embrace your dreams, and cherish your life. And get out there and do something fun today. All right? We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.